This was a hike to remember. You might say our whole nation was involved. For something was at stake that concerns you and me and our children and the children of our children. You might say, too, that it began in our nation's capital because the idea for such a hike started with William O. Douglas of the United States Supreme Court. This is Justice Douglas coming down the steps of the Supreme Court building to meet some other people who are going along on the hike. They'll be joined by still others from all parts of our country. And they'll all go to the state of Washington, way off in the northwesternmost corner. Justice Douglas invited his friends to a salmon barbecue where freshly caught salmon were baked over open fires. He was born and raised in the state of Washington, a few miles from this very spot. Salmon barbecues are an old custom here, originating with the Indians. An old friend of Justice Douglas was in charge of the barbecue. Perhaps that's why the salmon tasted so good. For salmon are his business. He operates a custom cannery near Forks, Washington. There he cans and smokes salmon, which he sells in his small store. His name is August Slather, and he's an expert not only in preserving salmon, he knows where salmon can best be caught. He knows the wild country hereabout, and we were glad he came with us on our hike. Next morning, we assembled with our pack boards filled for a three-day hike. The importance of this hike to our nation was recognized by newspapers, magazines, radio and television stations, who sent their reporters and cameramen along with us to cover the story from beginning to end. That's where I came in. I was one of the cameramen who went along. And I'm going to tell you about the hike as I saw it. We started where the road ends, about three miles from the beach. We followed a trail through deep forest. It led across a clearing that used to be a farm. Today, this is all a part of Olympic National Park. It took us more than an hour to reach the coast. We came to the beach at Cape Alava. Except for Alaska and Hawaii, this is the farthest west point in the United States. Here we stop to rest. And we had a bite of food called gorp, a mixture of nuts, raisins, and chocolate carried by hikers. Pretty soon we started down the beach on a route which would take us along the coast for a distance of 20 miles. We were not in a hurry. Most of the time we were strung out, resting, walking, or looking at strange things. For example, this. It looked like hay. It was seaweed carried ashore by the ocean. And this, a petroglyph or picture carved on rock. Indians carved it sometime in the prehistoric past. We walked along the beach, sometimes crowded against a cliff, sometimes with soft sand underfoot. Late in the afternoon, we camped at a place called Sand Point. Soon campfires were lighted and everyone picked out his spot for sleeping under the stars. I reflected that this beach used to be known only to Indians. They had camped here just as we were doing. Only they didn't have canned food or matches. This was the month of August, perfect weather for camping.
Dishes, of course, had to be washed. And this called for a picture. Come to think of it, with the whole Pacific Ocean for a dishpan, better take two pictures. Some of the writers sat down after supper to make notes for stories which appeared later in newspapers and magazines all over the country. While Justice Douglas, with his dog Sandy, went for a barefoot stroll. I wondered what his thoughts were. And I found out later, when I read his book, My Wilderness, the Pacific West. I dream of far off peoples who share the Pacific Ocean with us. I think of time and the universe and the unseen forces that have made the earth of which we are a part. I realize how small and minute man is in the cosmic scheme. This is a place of haunting beauty, of deep solitude. This is the wildest and I think the most picturesque beach area of our country's whole coastline. On a warm summer evening, this beach is indeed a bit of paradise. And indeed it was. We all walked along the hard packed sand in the warm glow of the setting sun, thankful for all this beauty. For a while we sat around a campfire, but soon we slept. And we're up bright and early next morning. Breakfast eaten in the wilderness always tastes twice as good. Fog was hanging over the headlands this second morning of the hike, so that rocks and islands lying offshore appeared and disappeared. For a while, we were in the fog, too. It made everything seem out of focus. But soon the fog lifted, and one of us came upon some tracks. I followed them into the forest, where I found a mother deer with her fawn. A little farther on, we found another larger than a deer track. It was made by an elk, much more shy than a deer, and I was lucky to get this picture. <laughs> August Slather and I hiked ahead of the others for a while, and we were rewarded with the sight of a bear, out for his stroll on the beach, too. We stopped to rest about 10 o'clock. Television and newspaper cameramen took pictures from time to time, and we all soaked up the wild beauty of this rugged coast. I realized that right where we were, huge waves come thundering in, knocking big rocks against each other and against the rock cliffs with tremendous force. Mostly, this happens during the winter, when big storms hit at high tide. Slowly, the coastline is worn back by the ocean. Where rock formations are stronger, pillars of rock, or stacks, are left standing. Ocean shipping has to stay far offshore along this coast. Anything caught by a storm will suffer, as did a whale whose bone we found. I came back a year later and found another whale which had come too close to shore. We found other things to tell us how furious winter storms are. Great logs tossed high up on the beach. Logs that were trees growing near the coast and got carried into the sea. Storms had hammered them against the rocks without mercy. Their sides had become a mass of splinters. Sometimes ships get too close to shore and suffer the same fate as trees. 
Soon they're broken into pieces. After a few years, one may find only an iron ring from a ship's mast. We stopped at Cedar Creek shortly after noon. Our second day's hike of eight miles was hard going. Still, some of us had a lot of energy left, enough for a dip in the ocean. The water was cool, something like 53 degrees Fahrenheit, but that made it all the more stimulating. About mid-afternoon, we had visitors, a troop of Boy Scouts coming from the other direction. Justice Douglas and Dan Beard, superintendent of Olympic National Park, went out to greet them. Lucky boys. When I was a Boy Scout, we didn't have a beach like this to hike over. Soon it was supper time, and again campfires were lighted. We never had to look far for fuel. Driftwood was plentiful. We slept soundly the second night and were up early for breakfast. I made an interesting discovery. Here we were, 70 of us, each carrying a heavy pack. But it was fun. Most of us would like to do it all over again. I've come back to this beach several times since the hike because I enjoyed it so much. We tried to reach some headlands before the arrival of high tide. That's why these two hikers are hurrying. I believe they made it, but those behind them were too late. They had to come back and scramble up the steep slope of the headland and go down the other side. In bygone geological ages, this beach was alternately above and below sea level as the crust of the earth gradually rose and fell. Sometimes when it was underwater, sediment was deposited, forming some of the rocks we were walking on. At other times, volcanic eruptions occurred and molten lava came up and hardened into rock. We came on to such a place where a flat ledge of volcanic rock extended a hundred yards toward the sea. This provided one of the most graceful meetings of land and sea. Here you can stand for hours watching the ebb and flow of the sea. We discovered one after another of interesting kinds of marine life. But always we only touched and did not carry anything away. Why not? Because others would come to this beach after we left. Perhaps you will come, and you would want to see the same things, living and moving, just as we found them. I've often recalled what Justice Douglas has written. There is much beauty in the earth, in the hard sand beneath me, the waves that make it, the alder and spruce above me, the ferns and the broom grass that envelop me. All this seems precious, almost sacred. I think we should make a diligent effort to keep it in the same condition in which we found it. As our hike neared its end, I recalled why we had all come from all corners of our nation. To enjoy the beach, of course, but also to protest a plan for building a highway along this wild, untrammeled beach. Highways, of course, have been built along nearly all the coastal areas of our country. Only the 20-mile stretch we had hiked over is still as it was before man arrived. We felt that it should stay that way, not just for us, but for generations to come. Once a highway is built through a wilderness area, that wilderness will be gone forever. It cannot be brought back. Only a few people would profit from building a highway along the 20-mile beach we had hiked, 
compared with the thousands all over our country who enjoy wilderness. Again, the words of Justice Douglas came to mind. Do roads have to go everywhere? Must we pave all the wilderness trails? Can't we have 1% of the woods and the beaches for those who love wildness? Our group shared these thoughts. We wanted our beach without any hot dog stand. And after all, there are beaches where one can drive for miles and miles beside the waves. These beaches are easily reached and easily left, usually with a trail of tin cans, pop bottles, cardboard boxes, and paper plates strung out behind. These were our thoughts as we neared the end of our three-day hike. I'm glad to say that the 20 miles of beach we traveled are still wild. You can go there just as we did. A highway that some people wanted to build has not been built. We hope it never will be built. But that's not just for us to say. How do you feel about it?